Hey everyone, I'm Nog and welcome back to Satisfactory. In the last episode we started setting up our new uh, smelting array and uh, I have been continuing doing that and I want to show you what I've done. But before we go and have a look at that, uh, I've just from my little uh, stash area over here, I have set up an assembler making uh, reinforced iron plate out of our alternate recipe so it's six iron plate and 30 wire uh, and it's producing uh, well 15 15 iron plate and 75 wire per minute and it's producing seven and a half uh, stitched iron plate uh, per minute so that's quite nice to have going and uh, I have quite a bit of uh, reinforced iron plate on me uh, 224 so some not uh, not like it's overflowing or anything but yeah so also I have hooked up our iron miner over here uh, that one right there running over here it's just run along the belt and it's coming up here and merging with uh, this iron miner and then we are getting in to the building uh, however we have also hooked up both our copper and they are on the top line so we are do have uh, both iron and copper produ production going so here we have actually let's uh, let's go up top and uh, and have a look uh, i built a look up out tower here so let's have a look at that so, All right. Whoops. So, yeah, we have a bit of smelting going on. So we have a total of 24 uh, smelters set up in three, uh, uh, you might say, units of eight smelters. So we have two times eight smelters producing iron iron ingots and we have eight smelters producing uh, copper ingots but right now because we don't have mark three belts unlocked uh, they are not saturated they're only saturated with material right now on the belts as you can see because they have not uh, nothing uh, no storage left so and they have nowhere to, to send it and use it for something but uh, Right now, it's actually only uh, four of the machines that are in use in each of the arrays of eight. But once we get the Mark III, uh, it will be all eight that are in use and running at uh, 100%. So, as you can see, I built walls up around uh, over on the far side and down there. And we're going to enclose it, uh, but we're not going to put a complete roof on top. I think we will put the outer uh, line of concrete and the, the or the two outer lines and then the middle line because that means that we can put a row on top and put 24 smelters more if we want and have a hell of a lot of smelting going and still have open air in between the two levels so that kind of realistically the smoke can get out because it would be it would bug me if it was completely closed closed off and uh, these things were smoking like hell and yeah that would just uh, not sit right with me whoa this, this is gonna hurt yeah ouch all right so for the outputs well let, let's start with the inputs so if we look at the inputs uh, the one at the bottom is always the one being used so here we have three layers of belt and this is the f the first array of eight ends right here then we have two layers of belt uh, the, uh, the second layer here goes down and be becomes the first layer and once this array ends uh, right here then the second the new second layer which was the third layer before comes down and becomes the only layer that's left and which is uh, in this case the copper ore on the other side it actually works backwards so 
in the beginning down here at the end uh, let's just get down there let's see where does the first array end it ends here so as you can see there's only one layer of belts here all going into these mergers and then it goes up a level and a new array comes out and starts uh, at the bottom level while this runs on top and then this array ends and go up as goes up a level and the copper array starts here and starts sending its uh, iron ingots out on the bottom level while the two iron levels are above it and they all go into this window and out here the closest one to me now just goes out and comes into another window here the others uh, I had to do a little bit of uh, stuff with so I moved it out on some uh, stackable poles out here and they come in through this window as well so yeah I think that's a pretty cool uh, setup that we have going there all right so now it's time to start setting up over here and what I've been thinking is uh, to run them out uh, let's just uh, try it and see how it works so I want these to come out here hopefully this can come down there and I want space in between because I did a bit of experimenting and it's really annoying not having a little bit of space in between the, the uh, two stacks so we'll have a iron stack and a copper stack here there we go all right so we have that coming in and do these across a little bit but not enough that they clip so that's fine that's good all right so the first and easiest thing to set up uh, will obviously be just iron plate and iron rods so i think we're going to start by doing that so let's uh, get some constructors we don't need smelters on the hotbar right now so we will put the constructors on that and just have the constructors line up uh, let's see i want them in here i think and going that way yeah like so could come a bit closer just to save a bit on space i guess so set it up there and another one for iron rods and then we can uh, get those two products going so what we'll do is we will run a pull out uh, this way um, let's see how much space do we need probably something like this and then we will make a turn I think it can get around that corner right yes it can uh, let's just get them both going actually I want to have the copper as well so let's tear them down again and move them out a little bit further so let's make it around here and make that turn there and then we need the copper come in somewhere we'll, we'll do that afterwards uh, for we come over here go in there and then we can have a look at the copper so we need definitely need a stack I wonder I think it will be right there no one over like so that should do it and then I think uh, this can make a 90 degree turn right there yes it can and this is going out perfect so let's uh, get another stack thingy up there and 
get this going. There we go. And what I really like about this setup is that we actually can calculate how much iron ore or how many iron ingots we're using. And then we can end the bottom belt uh, whenever we reach the point where we're saying, okay, we've used all of the iron ingots. So let's end the belt there and start uh, the new one, uh, the top one. Uh, the top one can then move down and become the only one left. Or the next level can move down and become the one left. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, what there's two ways of doing this which one do i want to use so the first one is just stick splitters up here right and have them uh, split out in here the other one is to l get the belt down to ground level and then stick them in and then get it up to level again and i think that's what i want to do so let's uh, get some splitters All right, that does not look right. No, this is a bit tricky because it doesn't actually line up with the with the belt. So, where you don't get the the line up uh, indicator thing with the belt, so that makes it a little bit tricky. Where is there? So we don't need that right there all right so we run this in here run it through and we just need regular conveyor belts or mark one conveyor belts going into these two machines and then we need a stack thing we can put out here, I guess. Could actually just keep it down here for now and make um, screws here as well. I think we'll do that. Uh, so let's see, how do we want to set up screws? Um, well, we could put one there and then put one over here, something. We need two belts for that, or uh, two uh, machines for the screws. I think we'll do like this. And then we can have this coming out like so going in there and we need another splitter and see now it lines up because we we have something on the ground so I, we can line it up with the with these uh, indicator lines so we need it right there and we still Still need, so we've spent, let's just see, we have spent 30 ingots, 60 ingots, seventy-five ingots, uh, let's see, screws, 15 per minute. So this all adds up to 75 ingots that we, we're spending now out of when we get Mark 3 belts 240. So let's just keep going with Mark 2 here for now. Why is this not, is this not lined up right? Or maybe this is a, I think I got that one turned around a bit. That. There. That's right. So, like that. 
and like that. All right. So these are lined up and are now able to produce once we hook, hook them up. So let's just get a... Hmm, should we just keep it down on the ground? I think we should, but I do need to get... Uh, this going along. So, and then I need the hopper going along as well. Like so. Alright. Oh, well, that's pretty good. Let's uh, see about see what we can do about getting some power in here uh, what we could do is just take from this thing and pull it in I think so if we put a power pole over here does that line up that yeah, does and then we let's see tear this down maybe Maybe it's that one. Let's just tear both of them down and then get a power pole over here. Right there. And let's hope that it doesn't say encroaching others clearance. It does not. Fantastic. All right, so it runs just above the, the lines. That's beautiful. Uh, let's get the uh, walls back in there. Oh, I want the center door. So, and then I just want a regular wall. All right. So there we go. Uh, we have power over here. And what we could do is just run the power down this way. Which is what I think I'll do. Like so, and put you up, and you up, and then I think I want to put power poles for each machine, uh, or set of machines, just because it's better to have too many than too few power poles. It gets annoying when they get filled up. Like so. All right. So we should be producing everything here. Yes, we're producing iron plate. Uh, oh, iron plate. Uh, why do I have two iron plate machines? I don't want to have that. I want to have iron rods. Uh, so iron plate, iron rod, iron rod being turned into screws. Outstanding. So that's our first little uh, area of uh, production here. And all of it, as I said last time, will be going over on our uh, storage area over there eventually. But we'll do that later. Right now I want to get all the basics going. So let's just get some more constructors. And this time uh, it will be copper. So copper wire. And we'll do over here. Leave a little bit of room. And then we'll do uh, copper wire into cable. There. Right. So let's get this moving along. Uh, uh, first, stackable poles. And uh, let's just get one here or something. And 
here. And we need to bring this along. Like so. And then we need splitters. I'm thinking that it's there. Does that look like? No. One closer. Uh, so there. And there. And then we will bring this down. Dang it. Alright. Let's uh, move the pole back just a tad. There, maybe. And this is not right. It needs to be right in the middle. Well, there is right. And let's see if we can get this down there. We can. And set up another one. Where does it align perfectly there? And pull it over. And. Oh, this is backwards. Uh, nine. There. And that's backwards too. There. All right. And I don't actually think we need copper anytime soon again. Maybe we do, but then, then we will need to keep it up anyway. We might, because I think what we'll set up next is actual uh, iron plate, or re reinforced iron plate, I should say. And then uh, we will need wire for that, because I want to do uh, stitched iron plate instead of regular, because we use so much copper, or so much iron, and not very much copper. So, might as well use the copper for something. There we go. And this needs to be cable. And actually, since we are not using uh, this for quite a while, we can just make it up. Then I want to bring it up again. So that we can run under it. Um, there. And there. And we are running out of reinforced iron plate. Which is okay, we can just go grab some. Uh, Alright, so there. There. We have enough to complete this project. For now, anyway. Alright. So there we go. Let's uh, hook some power up to these guys. Uh, let's see, let's just stick one every two or something. That. And then we need some here, there, and one is actually enough, so we take some power from there to there, and then we can hook these three machines up. And get them all going. Are you set up to make cable? Yes, you are. You don't have any wire, but it's coming there. And you are producing wire. Yes, you are. Outstanding. So yeah, this is uh, my plan. And then uh, I don't think we have room for another construction area down here. Uh, so we'll come around and... 
Actually, we could just... That's not a bad idea. We have splitters here. We do need one for... Uh, for copper, for, for the... Uh, reinforced iron plate, but that's about it. So let's build it here. And then have production areas on both both sides of uh, of the belt, and then it can come around around the other production area and go down this way and just snake its way down through as far as it needs to go. That's the plan. That is the plan. So, in order to make stitched iron plate, let's just have a look at an assembler. We just need uh, iron plate and wire, so that is super simple. Uh, the regular iron plate needs screws, so you need iron plate, you need uh, rods, you need screws, and then you need to get it in. But here it's just iron plate and uh, wire. So this is really, really easy to do, which is great. So let's set up an assembler over here and we are on the ground floor so we don't actually need to have that much space in between but let's leave a little bit anyway just so we can run fast and then uh, we need wire uh, let's set up that up there I Oh, no, that's not going to work. We need to move it a little bit. Um, we need to put it so that there's a space in between the splitters down on the ground floor. So that we can get a splitter in for the, um, what's it called? The copper up here. So let's take a splitter in right there and have hopefully have this run out there yes we can fantastic and then we can have iron run in there and this needs to make iron plate and this needs to make wire i don't think this got it yes it did and then we just need a constructor or assembler sorry uh, which will put uh, as much in the middle of these two as we can Something like that. Is that far enough out? Yes, it is. So we can do like this. Uh, yeah. Let's just do like that. It's fine. Uh, there. This uh, is actually all we need to make stitched iron plate. Very, very cool. So that means that we'll have our uh, reinforced iron plate production set up up here. And I really like that. All we need to do is power it up. And so let's get some power poles running down this way as well. And again, I think we'll do one every two. Like so, and then it can come in here and sit right in between here, and one over here. So, yeah, I need one or more over here. There, all right. Let's hook up some power and see how it does. And then let's take a look at our uh, power consumption. Because I think it's probably getting a little bit high. And I think it just might be getting a little bit high. All right. So you're hooked up, you have your recipe, but you don't have any products yet. They are coming now. And this produces 15 
per minute. This uses 15 per minute. This only produces 45 per minute, and this actually takes 75. So we need to overclock this uh, to get it up to where it needs to be. It needs to be making 75 a minute. Let's see, 168, can we do that? 167. Yes, 75.15. That's as good as it's going to get. So this is producing exactly, more or less, uh, what uh, this machine needs. I'm okay with it having an overflow of 0.15 a minute. I don't really care. And the iron plate is producing exactly what it needs. And this should be producing at 100%. Very, very nice. All right. This is a great start to our new factory. I think it's going to be much more uh, enjoyable to play, I think, uh, for me at least. And I think it's, it's going to be a, a lot more efficient. So let's see how much uh, iron are we using from the bottom line now. We are using 30. 60, 90, no, uh, 75, 90. So with all of this going with one machine producing each thing with 100%, we're actually not even using up uh, the capacity that we have now. And we're going to double that capacity on, on, the bar, on each belt. So that is really nice. But let's uh, let's have a look at the power because that's uh, a concern. Oh, okay, we're not using that much. Only ah, let's say a hundred. But that's also because these guys are full now and they have nowhere to stick their stuff. So that is something that we will need to figure out as well. But that's something that we'll do in a later episode. Uh, let's see. This thing doesn't need more. Copper. It's using 30 wire a minute, and this is producing 45 a minute. So we could actually overclock this a bit if we want, or we could just underclock this. I think I'd rather underclock this uh, to must be 67%. Whoops. So that it's just producing the 30 a minute. There we go. That means that this is going full tilt. Uh, even if this is on the clock. Oops, not that one. That one. Very nice. So we're saving a bit of power there. Let's go uh, go up in the uh, lookout tower and have a look-see at what uh, this looks like. And then we will call it an episode. I have to say I really like the the smelter line. It looks really cool, I think, with all of these smelters in one long line. Just filling out smoke and uh, melting our stuff. And the factory, actually, maybe we should build another lookout tower over there. I think I'll do that, just to have a look. Wow. Falling out of towers hurts. So can we build one up here? That would be kind of nice. Which we can. Alright, so we have one of each basic item going down here in this little area. And then we have the first, uh, let's say, one tier up uh, where it needs two products. 
going over here which is a reinforced iron plate or in this case a stitched iron plate so yeah i think that is really really nice really nice okay that's gonna be it for uh, this episode guys thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you next time <laughs>